Hey there, fellows. So this is an interesting situation. Yesterday I brought this lovely vehicle into my garage. Today I attempted to start it and it refused to. After a bit of investigation, I worked out that the engine had no fuel. I gave our mechanics a call, asked that they give me a hand, and they were like, nah, dude, we want to see how you get out of this yourself. But I have an angle grinder, a hammer, a welder, and now I'm going to try to get it moving somehow. Let's go. This is where we're currently at. The firing must have been due to some fumes. Now some simple troubleshooting. Take a bit of gasoline. And feed it right in there. And that's how I worked out that there is no fuel going into the engine. But I mean, no big deal. What can be done given the predicament I find myself in? I know what to do. I have a magic shelf back there, let me show you. Over here I have got this lovely thing. I even still got the gasket for it, holy cow. This is a carburetor, and it should be big enough to get a 2JZ to run. After all, this is a carburetor for an engine that has more displacement. With a lot of cylinders. And it should be an excellent match. For any sort of fuel-injected engine to replace the injection system. Let's try installing it and see how the car drives. Will it even drive? Of course it will, let's get to work. So look here, I've begun the teardown, and here I found this lovely mass airflow sensor. It measures the amount of air going in. And this somewhat crazy idea occurred to me. Maybe I shouldn't tear all of this down. Maybe I just leave the throttle body assembly be, leave the cable as well as these servos that adjust stuff, and fit the carburetor right here. Leave it fully open and leave it to the stock throttle body to modulate the amount of air mixed with the fuel that's going in. That is entering the engine via this carburetor. Maybe I'll even be able to keep all of this on. Let's give it a try and see where things go. Okay, so I've welded a plate to a bend, and with this being an experiment, I've temporarily secured the assembly with scotch tape. I couldn't find the pipe required to connect it all, but for the sake of the experiment, I think this should do. Now I bolt it down, pour in some gasoline, as you would, and attempt to start this bad boy. Let's go. So check this out, I've kept everything nice and simple, but it's ready, the carburetor is full of gasoline, that's all good. In this position it is cracked open, I'll just leave it like that. And from here we're going to be using the factory throttle cable to modulate everything. Okay, well, let's try this out. Come on now. Right, I'd better press the gas slightly. To increase the amount of air going in. Oh, well, for real? You do realize the gas pedal is doing exactly what it's supposed to.
It runs superbly. And, uh, yeah, guys. Some of you might think that I could have run it on the fuel injectors. But why don't we unplug them? That's one. There we go. Now, about the scotch tape, I did mention that it's temporary, and the gasoline is slowly eating away at the tape. But now I am going to install some sort of rubber coupler, and from there I think I'll be ready to head back to base. Let's do this. So look here, guys, after I completed the installation, well, I thought I'd successfully make it work, but no. The thing is, it doesn't start well in this position. I'm having to slightly close the butterfly valve for the engine to pull in more fuel. And the interesting thing is that the engine runs at first, then it's unable to hold idle, and I'm forced to open the stock throttle body to maintain flow of the air and the fuel. So yeah, I'm having to do that, but engine operation is very unstable, it keeps on stalling, and I do not like that at all. At first I was gleeful and expecting to set off soon, but not so fast. Okay then, I guess I'm going to have to remove the factory throttle body. I wanted to keep this simple, but I'll remove the factory throttle body and stick the carby straight to the intake manifold. That should get this working for sure. Okay, so it's on there, everything is good. And now, well, I do need to say something. You see, on this you have got a couple of sensors. First you have the TPS, also this servo. And these need to be connected, I mean, obviously the throttle position sensor won't be doing anything. But I'm afraid that without it, the car is going to be throwing all sorts of codes at us. I don't know what to expect. But we'll find everything out soon enough. So let's get everything hooked up and try going for a drive. Okay, let's see. Oh, terrific, it's even maintaining idle. And off we go. Okay, guys, so everything works, though I did replace the fuel tank. That small one runs out too fast. Hopefully this will be enough for me to get back. And while I was working, the weather deteriorated. But no problem, that happens pretty often. There's an hour still left in the workday, and since I've gotten this up and running, I should head back to base. I'll go. I am slowly moving. That is nice. And the gearbox is working. I was expecting it to go slightly haywire without the correct signal from the throttle position sensor. But it seems to be shifting just fine. Things seem to be going well. Okay, there we go. Come on now. I realize you are struggling to go uphill with the carburetor, but we need to make it, come on. Hey, it is able to move around. The carburetor is for a large displacement engine. And it should be more than adequate for this one. But it's difficult to tell. It might be slightly flooding the engine, or slightly starving it. But when I slightly squeeze the fuel tank, Put a bit of pressure on it to expedite fuel flow to the engine. 
it does seem to accelerate a tad better. I am having to play around with the gas pedal or the accelerator pump, uh, yeah, I think there might be a deficit. But when you have more fuel being sucked in by the engine, it does accelerate a tad better. After a bit of driving, things are starting to clear up. Look at it go! This is all right. There is nothing impossible here, you can very much get something like this to work. Okay, I made it. And the car drove under its own power. This is a very simple solution, albeit the transmission wouldn't go any higher than the second, but I was moving in the lower gears. Yes, I had to keep more fuel going into the engine. That carby is for such a big engine, but it still feels as if it's insufficient. But whatever, what matters is I made it. Okay guys, so the car made it back on its own. Even if something goes wrong with your fuel system, this sort of setup can help you out. You'll see that... This works brilliantly. But with a bit of fine-tuning, you can make this usable. And that's it for this video, catch you guys later.